Turn these all down. Are we putting this in the meeting? Give me a second. See my email on Friday? No, my text, like the text about the meeting being canceled, yeah. I never got it. And I happened to come up to drop something off, and Joanne was like, Yeah, there's no meeting. I don't know what's going on. So I haven't seen text for a couple of weeks. Huh. Did you text or email about it? So I, I emailed about it. Yeah, I got the email. Yeah. Just a reminder. I see one from 11.30, but I don't check these emails. The diligence. So that's all. Okay. Yeah, so you get this thing. This is from the meeting last week. Is that? Uh, no, I think I got that one. Huh. I think there's something about it. Yeah, so I thought, oh, you posted, but I had, I had received oh. something. Oh, I'm sorry. For some reason, you're not. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. There's, a no there's a chain with everyone but you. That's <laughs> easier for me than thinking I didn't get Okay, it's sorry. Different. Different. Yeah. This is funny. Well, I in the beginning, it was Welcome. So this is the second community listening session for our Resilient Dirt Roads project. Uh, it's a joint project with the towns of Chester and Middlefield. Um, it's through a state grant for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. So it's really centered on preparing our town for uh, the kind of severe weather events that we've actually seen pretty recently and that we're expecting to see a lot more of. Um, and in particular, of course, we're looking at our dirt roads, our gravel roads, our roads that don't have uh, the same level of protection as, as other roads in town. Um, so again, this is a, a joint project with a couple other towns and Pioneer Valley Planning Commission uh, is helping us out with it. Uh, this is Erica Larner. She's kind of our, our main point of contact with them and she's gonna be walking you through a few slides. Um, and then we're gonna jump into the meat of the, the meeting and actually just talk about, you know, what dirt roads you're concerned about, what areas you wanna prioritize and 
uh, we'll get we'll get into it from there. So, Erica, I'll hand it over to you. All right, fantastic. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, it's Chris Sickerton. I'm Erica Marnar. I'm a senior environmental planner with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And we are helping to facilitate a project called Evaluating and Planning for Resilient Dirt Roads in Blanford, Chester, and Middlefield. Um, <clears throat> before we get into, say, the larger description of what this grant program is, something that's come up before is what is resiliency? We hear the word a lot. But what it actually means has kind of lost a, a little bit of its actual definition. So resiliency is the ability of a system to both withstand and rebound from an extreme event. So if you were to have a severe windstorm with lots of rain and, and you, um, trees were coming down, it's how well could Blanford withstand and not suffer damage that reduces its services to the public? And if it does suffer damages that reduces its service <laughs> to the public, how quickly and well can it rebound from that event? So that's what we're really talking about with the dirt roads is how can we make sure that they can withstand extreme events and easily be fixed if there is a problem. Come on and join. Please, everyone, if you get hungry while I'm talking and we're all talking, <laughs> jump into the snacks and drinks. They are here for a reason. All right, so this grant has been provided um, by the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program um, through the Mass Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, about $317,000. And previously um, on this program, the match requirements, what towns had to come up with for was 25%, which in a lot of grant programs are actually pretty low amounts as it is. But based on a lot of the feedback that rural towns tend to get a lot less funding and um, really are having a difficult time sustaining their roadways and other programs, this program has reduced the match requirement to just 10%. So they provide 90% towns in 10%. And that match can be both cash and in kind, meaning people who volunteer, staff time spent on projects, things like that are all in kind services that can count to that. Um, so this is a two-year project. Year one will actually be ending this June. And this year, we are doing an analysis of the dirt roads in Blanford and Middlefield, particularly having um, uh, engineers looking to get field work and internships coming out and evaluating with um, supervising engineers for the structures of the roadway and analyzing the fever activity in Chester. In year two, which will end in June 30th, 2024, there'll be an analysis of the dirt roads in Chester, and then Blanford and Middlefield will get to have their beaver activity exam. And in reality, the field work is all going to be happening between now until the beginning of fall. It's just fiscal year splits it um, June 30th to uh, July 1. So we have a variety of project partners that we want to make sure we mention and thank, uh, specifically the towns as they are the leading figures in this project, Blanford, Chester, and Middlefield. And each town has a community liaison here in Blanford who have Paula, Paula Billigo. And I have to say she's been wonderful at getting the word out, encouraging people to come and helping me coordinate with town that I haven't been to before. And it's good, I love it here. Um, Chester has Meredith Babcock and Millfield has Ken Martin, in case you know anybody who lives in those towns and they'd like to comment on the project as well. Uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, where I am from, Mass E O. EAA, those initials kill me every time. Um, Boston O'Neill is the engineering company. They're analyzing the fever activity and providing technical memorandums for that. And then Hitchcock, Fox and O'Neill. So F U S S O'Neill. Yep, right at the bottom. And then we are also working with the Hitchcock Center for the Environment for outreach programs like um, teaching um, elementary grade students and high school students. So why are we focusing on dirt roads? So the network of dirt roads in rural towns are critical to your public safety, emergency evacuation, and as routes to schools and jobs and regular daily life. They are also an important part of the rural character from the beautiful aesthetics and scenery to their speed reduction um, and to the realities of the cost of paving and maintaining those projects. Um, Additionally, there are some concerns about impacts to local waterways with um, washout of road materials and high quality cold water streams and rivers, 
So while you may not get something like um, an asphalt with a lot of uh, runoff without any kind of infiltration, on gravel and dirt roads, you'll see that the runoff from the roads can pick up sediment and end up in the streams. So there's always a cost one way or another. Um, the other thing is, is that maintenance of roadways in general, and in particular, the dirt roads represent a large percentage of municipal expenditures based on the care that's needed for the roadway surfaces. Um, and climate change trends are making it all more difficult to not only stabilize, but maintain um, and have resiliency post um, extreme events. So these climate change projections that I'm sharing are specific to the Westfield watershed. So they are specific to your county area. They're not uh, Boston, they're not nationwide, worldwide. We, um, we get it from resiliencema.mass.gov. It's a really intense, fabulous um, data site in which you can look at all the past and present, um, you know, precipitation data, weather data, and really evaluate it and down to the watershed um, area and not just like statewide. So some of the things that I think people are actually starting to notice is that our annual average temperature is um, increasing. In 1970, it was 40, uh, 44.5 degrees. And currently, we've already seen an increase of two degrees in this watershed. And by the 2090s, so that's 50 years ago, we've seen an increase in two degrees. In the next 50, we're expected to see an increase of approximately five degrees Fahrenheit, um, an additional five degrees. In, um, in annual days over 90, in 1970, you might have seen about two a year. Um, currently, what you guys are experiencing about seven a year. So there's already been a five day increase. And they're projecting in the next 50 years to see um, an 18 and a half day increase to, to nearly 26 days a year over 93. So I feel like these are the things that we really do see and can actually feel impacting. Some of the things that are some of the things that will that kind of sneak in you don't notice so much are things like annual days below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we had 172 of them in 1970. Currently, there's 154 of them. So you've already lost um, just over 18 days a year below freezing. In the next 50 years, there's an expectation to lose an additional 109 days so that you'd only be experiencing 45 days a year below freezing. Um, you can imagine how that might change. Um, and annual total precipitation. Um, so one of the things is that in this particular area, because you guys have a great set of forestation, you may find that some of these particular total precipitation data or extreme heavy rainfall events can be muted. It's one of the beautiful benefits of living in a very naturalized area. You can see, you know, the impact and goals of conservation working here. Um, but still, uh, 50 years ago, you were getting two and a half inches less rain in a year, and there's a projection of an additional four inches in the next 50 years. So when we look at our climate change data, and as you can see, I made sure I put little tildes to say approximate, because they take these data points and they track them. And the predictions cannot be perfect because, you know, cycles happen. So you can see they widen as we get further out, but you can definitely see that 32 degrees the days you experience are going down and the precipitation is going up. Um, and that data goes back to, in, in some cases, back to the climate. So. so what does this mean for our dirt roads? Warmer winters, hotter summers, and more precipitation mean you'll have fewer days below freezing, longer mud seasons. You'll get a freeze-thaw cycle that will not only cause damage to dirt roads, but also damage asphalt. So people who live paved roads are looking at these concerns as well. And increased precipitation means that there's going to be more storm water with increased erosion and localized flooding. Um, so these are the big concerns we're looking at to build capacity into your dirt roads. The major project outcomes it, that we will be producing will be a community engagement in education. Ta-da! Community engagement happening right now. Um, also, at these points in time, so we're giving some education, other opportunities to give us feedback and answer questions that you might have. We're also doing some education with um, youth. We're doing a third grade elementary class. Um, sorry, already did a project where 
Mr. Hitchcock sent up in the environment came in and they built beaver dams and they looked to see if they could build on the engineering structure that beavers do. And unshockingly, they rarely can. Um, so, you know, we all know how they function. And then in the fall, there'll be high school students actually coming out to the culverts in Blanford, Middlefield, and Chester and looking and examining culverts um, and learning how to evaluate whether or not they're large enough for waterway crossings, for uh, wildlife crossings, all of that. So we'll also be producing an online mapping and dirt road ranking tool. So you folks can look online and see where those dirt roads are, what their status is, and their ranking for needs and prioritization for fixing King Island. Actually, we have a lovely gentleman who works in Santa Steel, who brought an excellent example of um, a scoring matrix that we would use. Things like maintenance cost, community access, impact on health and safety, impact on local economy, and whether or not there is whether or not those are risks and the condition go together to rate which project should be protected and um, prioritized first. We'll be also producing a library of five to seven nature-based designs to deal with um, a variety of concerns you might have on dirt roads. Concept designs for two priority culverts in each town. So that means we'll pick a culvert, be like, yeah, this one needs a little bit of work. And you'll have concept designs to go for the next round of grant funding to actually design, implement, and have in place. And then we're also going to produce some regulatory recommendations to reduce any of these future concerns. Are there things that you can plan for in the future that will help relieve ones that might exist in the future? So before we get to the meat where I want to hear all of your frustrations, complaints, and genius ideas, does any of this actually um, start any questions in you about the project? Um, before we move on to you telling me all about your town, is there anything you want to make sure you ask me? Yes. Can we get a feeling of which uh, dirt roads are represented tonight here? And who's here? Who's here for which roads? There are over 50 roads in town. I just got to get a feeling of how much interest there is. If other people are comfortable, I kind of feel like that's a good sharing exercise. Yeah, great. As long as that works for you guys, because it's really led by you. Uh, yes, so which road are you on? I'm on Blair Road. Blair Road. All right, you know, and I'm going to start writing some of these down so that I know to go back. All right, so Blair Road. Who else is up here for a different road? Julius all alone. Julia. Julius. Julius. Paul. Paul. All right. Paul. H A L L. Paul. Thank you. All right. I would have eventually been like, who do I email to find out? Julia. Okay, how do I stop? D E U L A H. L A H. Land Road. Land Road. Excellent. Excuse my terrible handwriting, folks. The next Colbert, Sanderson Road. Sanderson Road. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Huntington Road. Huntington. And State Road. And what was the second one you gave me? State Road. H A I D H T. H A I G H T. Okay, perfect. All right. Anyone else from a different road? Yes. Bill Nybrook Road and Schoolhouse Hill. Nybrook. Perfect. And Schoolhouse. Yep. Okay. Anyone else on a dirt road that's different? Eight out of the approximately 30. 12 are represented. That's not a terrible representation. I could see that. All right. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, the list of uh, the roads. I mean, there's I in a alphabetical list at this exact moment in front of me. No, it exists. Yes, on our hard drives. And the map actually does map them out. So we do actually have them mapped. Although, if for some reason when you look at it and you see this is highlighted and it's not a dirt road, or you see a road that you know was mixed, please mark it. It's part of why we come out to talk to you guys because, you know, GIS can only tell us so much. Yeah, Records can only have a lot more. So I'm sure I saw that. Number. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Um, do you have anything about uh, forest fires and things always open for, um, you know, the ability to get 
fire equipment into? Um, I think that that's, I have actually heard it was just in Middlefield. Yes, we heard a similar idea that if one of, if there was a forest fire and this particular road one, there was no way to access to put this out in those large areas. So I think that making sure we evaluate access to potential forest fire sites, those large forested areas. Yeah. Um, access for fire control is a major focus. Okay, fire control. And is there a road you're thinking of in particular in Blanford that you think that would, yes, which one? Well, there's um, the Huckleberry trolley line that goes from Blanford down into Huntington. And it's drivable for some of the way. And there's um, Huntington Road itself goes from Blanford to Huntington. You know, it goes a little ways and then uh, it's the culverts are gone. It's really washed. I don't even ride the horses down there so bad. And then there's a road from Huntington Road down to um, Paula's house on Guybrook Road that I think this that for a fire road is pretty important. But um, it's closed off with these cement barriers and there's a bridge that's out on it. There's also Jethro Jones Road. <laughs> so I heard a different road, hold that in your head because I want to ask a question be before I lose it. The bridge that's out, is it, excuse me, is that a town owned bridge um, yes. versus DOT? Yes. Okay, all right. So it's something that like, for instance, making sure that we give you some grant programs and some availability for that particular solution might be a good idea. And, and if it was not DOT, <laughs> um, not that, they don't do a variety of vital things, but if they're not a larger city, we definitely kind of share that space. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, what was the other one that I missed? The yeah, other road? Jones. Jeff Row Jones? Yeah. Okay. And if you're going to add to that, you might go to Sanderson Park down to the park. Right. Okay. So, I have Sanderson Park, but what was the part I missed? Down to the park. Down to the park. To the heart, yeah. And Mule yeah. Land Road so it is the entrance into that as well. And Mule Land Road comes into Sanderson Book. I see. Right. I like to look at this. <laughs> All right. So, so this Mule Land Road goes into Sanderson Brook. Yeah. And then that goes down to the park. Sanderson book goes all the way down to the thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's a long way to go then. Thank you. But, no, thank you. All right, so let's see. Before we get into full on complaining session, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else I can answer you? And of course, anything that comes up, you can always ask me, but I want to make sure that I've addressed the concerns before we get to the. Yes. One of the things, and I mentioned this last time, was Schoolhouse Hill Road is where our power lines come down. It is an unmaintained road that is closed during the winter. It's in horrific shape and um, uh, Northeast Utilities or Eversource rather has, a, 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 it's a horrific time trying to get down there. And power lines also follow another closed road. What was the name of that road that's no longer existing? Yep. Road. Hate Road that goes up behind the old Toddell's house. Yeah. And that's another road that the power line. So we have two issues with power lines. Hate, hate well. Road's been closed for years and years. It's not a hate road, it's the old second division road. Oh, is it, it the, yeah. is yeah. it the yeah. old second division road? You know what? Road. I think you're right, Katie. Hate because road we studied road that. The corner of Huntington to the end of Hate Road. And then what was the old second division road? Is the second system. division of yeah. addition. <laughs> but probably four of those roads mentioned are not maintained, like no. uh, Huntington Road down. And, yeah. You know, so they're they're not maintained because it's discontinued and it's complicated. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's all stored. If we're going to throw everything into the mix, <laughs> yes. Bring it. That's what I'm here for. San, Saturn Road. Okay. 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 Okay.
Do you want me to write? Because I, I know most of this. You don't want to put your best. Thank you so much. So, and that goes into Otis? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so I imagine there's a section of that that would be potentially and a section that's not. That yeah, there's two washed out I'm happy to do it. You can barely hear Oh, I actually, that was a very specific detail I very much want to hear. What was that again? There's two washed out culvert pipes. Two washed out culvert pipes? That you can barely get over with ATVs. Take a life here. I'm on, I'm on the cemetery commission with TJ. I go back and I work on the cemetery. It's take a life in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> would you park where those are for me? That, no. would, that would make, thank you so much. Can I use a post-it? Oh, you can use a post-it. You can use a sticky note. You can write right on the map. You just bring all the supplies to see what we feel like those would stimulate your creativity. We also now have um, Iron Blair Road. Yes. And we also have the Upper Road. That's the paved area that goes down to Hibby Road. Correct. And what's the, the other one? Shepherd Road. Like so the, oh, yeah. Right Shepherd Road.
Two hours. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then you got another swamp. Yeah. Well, another swamp he's got up there with, uh, but that's the oldest. Oh, that's okay. the oldest that's, man. Yeah. Well, that's the oldest in the family. Well, yeah. Well, I felt you guys exclusively read my first question and immediately went to making sure we know which conservatives are most important to focus on. So I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> DJ makes a very good uh, explanation about the fire part of it. We used to run a grader and a dozer down here to help, but we have gotten to the point where we can't afford to do that. We don't have the equipment to do that as much as we used to. And I think that that sounds like, yeah, how do you enforce the, the agreement to make sure mm -hmm. those are maintained? And yeah, that's a great point. Oh, it's just the roads. Going on there, there's power lines that go down. Old Chester Road has power lines on there, too. Yeah. Is it still a school bus route? Uh, not a school bus. Uh, the city and the post office go down here. And then there's a water line that runs down, too. Okay, so there's a water line on Old Chester, too? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. I was just curious. Does anybody know about Milo Cove Road? Uh, schoolhouse Road, supposed to be 11 miles long, and I've never been down in the 50 years I've been to town. Probably not me, but maybe someone else knows about it. A lot of these roads have some two names. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> or, you don't know what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. That I think is now what they are calling Otis Holland Road right, from the looks of. I don't know if you got on this map. Okay. That's what it looks like from here. Okay, so it wasn't by a long gravel road. So, now I did have Springfield Water when I was here. I had them help me do some work for that road. They actually trucked in some gravel and we ran a uh, grader down in and cleaned down. But it hasn't been touched for quite a long time because we haven't had the resources to build it. So, so we just called what now? Or the solid road. Mm -hmm. And I think. Was it during the uh, the CLA meeting that we talked about one of the yeah, ideas that we did kind of came up with other towns for cost reduction measures, or is that yeah yeah because I think that what it, and I couldn't remember who is here or middle field meeting that the idea that if multiple people are having these issues and you said the cost and the equipment that they're making some collaborative things that could be investigated. So all right so. Let's get into some more specific stuff. Like, have you encountered specific problems on your dirt road? Like potholes, washouts? Oh, yeah. 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 You, have, you have a few. And you know the Mike Marco on the map, right? <laughs> yeah. So, and this is really part of what we want to make sure we do get, is if you have places where there are specific issues, I mean, definitely tell us about general ones as well. Um, but right now, if you have places that you know of, like the two culverts you mentioned, Perfect example. Anywhere else you could think of where there's a huge washout, uh, culverts have gone missing, maybe there's overtopping, you're getting washboarding so terrible you can't, you know, make progress down the road. Uh, anything like that? I think it's about to happen because they put new culverts in in front of the North Langford Cemetery a couple of years ago, and those are plugged up now, but I'm sure the town's going to clean them out because without them being cleaned out, square road washes out. And, you know, it, my concern is, is, is there a leaning toward preventative maintenance or secondary or tertiary maintenance? So perhaps of the some best practices and, as ideas for, for preparing so that you don't have, you know, a, a clog that's unnecessary? I mean, yeah. does, does, does the state program is pushing this looking to the town to develop primary preventive programs for their dirt roads, or they don't care and they're the ones who dump money into fixing them up after there's a disaster. But you mentioned disaster planning. And, and which way is it leaning? So that when the inevitable happens, less damage is done. So the idea is, is that we're preparing in advance to make sure the roads are able to tolerate to the best we reasonably can any events that might happen. So it is really preparing now um, here for the future problems. So um, you see it as the state getting behind towns in terms of getting funded for preventative 
work putting culverts in and those things ahead of time of commitment and a maintenance program for towns to prevent. That is definitely the goal of this program is that we are, you know, municipal vulnerability preparedness. We should be prepared for those vulnerable moments. Like that's really, you nailed it. That's the point of it. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, one problem um, on the Huntington Road is, and I, I just took a picture of the staff to you, but, you know, the water runs down the middle of the road. The actual middle of the road is, is, low, is lower than the ditches. And the problem is the road's not crowned. And, uh, and, and I think also um, the, the traffic tends to, you know, maybe it was crowned at one point, but, but the water tends to run down in the tire, tire track. And you put one little rug and, it, and it's amazing. You find a little rivulet and it'll just build up. Yeah. Well, I know by Hazel's house, especially the whole road. just past the, you know, it's just, you see the water's running down the middle of the road and it's, it, 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 it erodes and it gets rougher and rougher the more it rains. Yeah. It comes up a very good point by Hazel's stretch, period. And this is, and this is on Huntington? Okay, so it's, it's, so it already has, it's already got a bank on the mm -hmm. side so that no matter what, that water is going to handle it and that, That's what Christopher and I have been working on with Tyler Wilson, with the uh, doing IGA between the two towns about doing some major work on it. Um, but <clears throat> it's not going to happen overnight. Um, we got a lot of tree removal to do, a lot of ditches to move, a lot of side of the road to remove, and all that stuff to get, just to get it started. Then you got to make sure you got a piece and everything else. Um, and it has a big cost, and there's actually regional partnerships is also another one, another thing that they really value in this program. And if you guys start getting together with how you might arrange that legally and planning for it, it would probably be a really, really great um, application to mm -hmm. the MVP to really scale off something for these much more proportional issues. Yeah, they, they love to see places mm -hmm. team up together. So, yeah. Yeah, we hope that let's, let's go back a couple steps mm -hmm. to disaster. Okay. Um, we all, I know Brad and I have been through even bigger ones than I have, but even the small ones we had uh, almost two years ago, the water. Um, there's a threshold that, that the towns and the, and the county have to meet, okay? And that's through um, FEMA, all right? FEMA, yeah. So it starts off with, with a small group of towns, just like a few years ago we had all that rain. And then if we don't make the threshold, if we make the threshold through NEMA, then it's FEMA steps in. Okay, now FEMA is the federal, okay? So they got, they got the money, right? So the problem is that, that if they believe that we did not make it, we get nothing. Correct, we have to go through our representative or our state to try to get it through, yeah. through the house. Yeah, trying to get a declaration. Trying to get a declaration. It's, it's, it's really yeah. yeah. we, we yeah. so, yeah, much. Like, like for instance, yeah. Chester, yeah. Chester, Chester spent over a million dollars that last year or something, and all the water, all the problems they had now. Yeah. You know, where does the town get a million dollars from? That's, That's the problem. problem with you know, know, small towns that kill them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it one of the reasons why I'm really happy to see um, at least the, uh, the 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 regional coordinators in our region. Pushing this so hard to make sure that the MVP program reduces the cost in the small towns and that they, you know, that they really. You can get action grants, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that this is this is an action grant, um, even though there will be plans developed. Um, but with this, like the library of nature based designs, the concept designs, those are going to be open the next round. To, like next May, you could submit those with an application and be looking at funding for the county and the station for next year. And it really depends on how big the project is, whether you'd be ready in a year, but you know, definitely plan ahead because I'd kill for those kind of match numbers. <laughs> yes, yes. Another general problem is when you get big snowstorms like we had recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the roads are often um, very narrow. And I know our road was only about eight feet wide for a couple of weeks. And, and where do you put the snow, even if you can plow it, 
I mean, that's a really good thing. What's it like? Where do we put the sound? Yeah, and that's it. You have to push it up the the sediment. And it goes out with the plow, and then yeah. Not to mention when they're not frozen. No matter what plow you use, whether it be a grader or a truck or whatever it might be, you end up clearing up the road to begin with. And and, and that's actually great about in terms of you know when we, those frozen ground conditions. It's not just the inconvenience of the mud season; it is without frozen ground conditions. Even when it snows, your activities destroy the road. And that's an ongoing concern that isn't going to get leaked here. And that's, that's why at some point that if, if it's a warm we winter, we get a lot of snow, we, we, we don't call the road and that's what picks you up. Because, because I know you, know, you open that up and you have the sun coming, now you're going to turn into a mud. Yeah, yeah. But it is a, it is a problem in that uh, you have to cross your fingers and hope you don't need a car. Right after, right after the story, you need a car, and you know, yeah. there's no you way you can yeah. One has to back up. Yeah. 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 You're talking about problems about Jay not to change the subject, but uh, Chuck the road and the whole, whole Chuck the road has a hole in it. It plugs up, which causes Dave a lot of problems because it washes out the lower end of the road constantly. And we have to bring a grader up and fix it constantly, which if that culvert was running good and it was due correctly, he probably wouldn't have here the work that he's having. So, yeah. I, I think it's just the angle that they have the culvert yes, going. Yes, because it gets straight. Yeah, yeah it's going straight across the road this way. The culvert can go in at an angle catching it. It kind of do. It makes the head structure flow out over it, the top. Yeah. yeah. The stream crossings is one of my favorite things. Something I, I really enjoy getting out there. I mean, it's like, like scout is going to be fine. And yeah. the water is going to get in here and improve. It, you know, I love that. Can't, you can't tell water to do what it doesn't want to do. And you have to work with it. Run up yep. <laughs> <laughs> I actually. Did have a site visit early in my career with a new development dumping tons of sediment and water into a down like hillside farm, flooding out their fields, terrible, right? Terrible conditions. And went out to do a site inspection, and, and the guy who was the planning inspector was new and he's like, I'm like, well, do you see catch basin right there are full changes above the asphalt grade? It's probably why nothing's going in that. He's like, oh, no, no, no. The contractor told me that it just runs right up over it and goes in it. <laughs> like, oh, so no, that's how it happens. But um, yeah, you, you can't make it do those things. Yeah, but that's a great point. The stream alignment, like that old Chester Road is a culprit that you would have to do a lot less work on the road if the culprit was improved. Um, that's a good thing. Uh, well, let me just. Yeah, yeah. I just agree. Just so that's for me because I'll tend to. I don't know if you've done any yeah. culvert plants. Yeah. You, you, you looked at one this spring and then saw it's kind of the one that you can work on a line with their goals. Yeah. 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 yeah, because yeah. usually what, what they have on line is not what we actually have for culverts. They, you know, they talk about the big ones, you know, that are eight, ten feet or whatever. And I've tried one of those grants recently. Yeah, actually, did twice. Cold water fishery, mm -hmm. and I had a perfect spot. It looked great. Even the engineer said it looked great. You know what they told me? You don't meet all the criteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so DER in particular, like you know how everyone's underfunded in the staff, they have had very little money and been overly competitive, and it's because there were so many restrictions. Yeah, they were um, apparently those the uh, East Side Park infrastructure bills they needed the substantial funds, and they actually screened the department. Increasing it um, at least doubling the size of the whole park, mm -hmm. more than doubling the funds. So maybe it'll get easier. Because <laughs> I do know, yeah, <laughs> in, in different roles, I have applied for them. So, yep, I get it. Um, but it was, yeah, time check. We got about yep. 15 minutes for one second. Perfect. So, we're going to wrap it up in a few. I basically did put on here that other grant opportunities. 
um, making sure that you guys would have a list of if any of these match your first one or if you need matching or you have any ideas for different types of um, places if we're looking for money. So I'll make sure I include that. Yes. Has there taken place in the state a program to develop outlines or manuals for small towns to maintain their roads that they give up so that a town could have a template that says, okay, you start, you fill out the whole thing and it becomes a guide for each successive highway super that comes on board and they have some record to go with and a plan to go with and they know what to do first, second, and third each year and so I forth. Think, I think that's not at the record at the local level is difficult because um, improvement always, the techniques always improve over time. But yes, DOT does actually do training. We looked into it previous on uh, based on your previous comment. There are trainings and manuals available for that. One of the issues is that they don't tend to make them available at an easy location for the Western region. So that is something that's on the list of ways to prioritize to, to get education out here because if the material is available, it shouldn't be that hard to convince them to hold a meeting or two out here. So, but yes, based on your previous thought, we did find out it is available. Mass DOT has it and does classes and trainings. We just got to convince them to get out here and that's going to be our focus. So is it up to the town to petition them for that service or is it up to this program to develop for this part of it or how, you know, how does it get off the home plate and get the first base on this kind of issue? I, I guess it's the oldest cities. Thank you, uh, George. Not to interrupt. No, please. Um, UMass, under the transportation guidelines on the Bay State Road, they actually have these programs available. Okay. But what they have to do is they have to have so many participants in each one of the programs. Yeah. So, say, for instance, if Dave or I wanted to host one of these mm -hmm. classes that we could ask them to come out and to host a class here, but we would have to be able to come up with so many participants to be able to pay for them to bring their instructors here for their roads, for greater classes, for those kinds of things. So if, they would, so if you got three or four towns together, each town had five employees. Well, well, that's, that's the thing is that you could take it with other towns, but it doesn't mean they're going to send anybody. Yes, that's well, the thing. That's the question. I mean, if you're, if you're already done this program in three other towns, you're doing it three towns now, and I assume there would be maybe three other towns after this. I do. But do at too. least you have six towns that are aware now of the need for improving the dirt roads. Mm -hmm. The question <laughs> is, what does UMass need to have enough push to come out here and run a program for the six towns and I think, yeah, I think they have to make sure that their costs are covered. And I would say that how that is coordinated, we can consider assisting the other town guiding that process and potentially paying it up for um, a grant to potentially pay for the instructor so that you don't have to reach a target level. But before, but I would love to have you grab me afterwards to ask me more about it. I have about four to five minutes to do a little wrap up and see if anyone else has anything else they want to share, ask me <clears throat> before I start breaking down the equipment, so it gives you guys a second to mark anything on the map. Uh, if you can take one forward, we'll be showing you our shortly, and then you'll take us all on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so neat. <laughs> how dare they try and do a fish down business right? in their office? <laughs> um, so does anyone, yes? I just wanted to bring up the whole concept of traffic on roads. Yep. Um, there are there are some uh, dead end roads that need to have signage earlier. There's a, there's <laughs> a sign that says no through traffic, and I I can guarantee there are people who think that that doesn't mean you can only turn around here because you get these huge delivery trucks that still on the arrow map. Think that, they think that, that you yeah. know, and it's just like a big trailer, tractor trailer thing. And then also just um, the traffic that comes in um, ATVs, um, uh, dirt bikes, and someone just sort of, oh, this is a dirt road, we can do what we want. And yeah. I think that's that's not taxpayers, those are, those are other damaging 
things that happen. And so I, I just think that's you something heard a similar, we have to consider too. Yeah, similar story in Middlefield. So yes, I, I think that you can certainly say your experience is valid and it's someone else's. And the delivery trucks is really interesting to tie this idea that marking it more clearly, yes, we reduce traffic, turn around advantage. I think those are really good strategies. I like them a lot. And then also with the, the water in the middle of the road, sometimes also on the edges of the road, there's washouts. So eventually, you're, if you have a, a small wheelbase, you're trying to keep one tire on and it, and then there's, you know, potholes and rocks sticking up. It really gets challenging and it's, it's damaging to the car. Right, right. So it is something to think about. Now, I'm wondering, I have no idea. Something else I've heard is that um, GPS are actually the old um, news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 People are using roads that should not be a throughway, that's a throughway, causing more damage. Um, and I think that if, I think the select board can send, like, the arrow map saying, please take this off your GPS. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to say. Update maps and put a question mark because that right. maybe there's, can I investigate and again? If it's not being continuous, it's not maintained, then you need to get that GPS out of it. Right? Exactly. And it, even if it says, like, you know, hazardous road. So that people know, yeah, you should probably take that other direction. Right. Yes, yes. My GPS shows uh, Julius Hall Road is a two road. Yeah. Let's see, a lot of people. Mine was yeah. wrong. If I get yeah. to the end of my driveway, I set my GPS, it tells me to take the right. That's going to take the right in the board and put the reservoir. And what the other thing is, is that a lot of the GPS coordinates are old. All right, now, you, now I recently was using a trucker's GPS, and it showed that there was an exit on the turnpike here in Blanford. Mm -hmm. And I stopped the guy on Chester Road, and I said, you know, are you making a delivery? Or, and he says, well, no, I'm looking for the entrance to the turnpike. Oh, gosh. And I said, well, where are you going? He said, well, I'm headed west. And I said, well, God help you, because <laughs> there's no way you're going to go west even if you go to the end of this road, because you'll never make the turn to get on Route 20 to go west. You know, and uh, I, there's nothing, that I, I don't know how you can trust that. Well, I think updating maps, and, and, and if, for instance, we have GIS data that ranks them based on road cover, why can't the GPS systems also do that and say, it's true, but if it provides them as free data, that's like mass GIS. That means you have to get somebody to do it. Yeah. But you you ha you haven't seen me when I get like really determined about something. And I and I have other more dramatic words I could use to describe me when I get like that, but I can be very fast. <laughs> 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 yeah. So well, if you have a dead end road and you have a big tree on the wrong way to your lane and it's coming away from some store there, it's a way for the power company to say, say you can't you can't finish your road. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now they're stuck. They have no way in or out. For some of these roads that they're not maintained on the other end, actually have a way out if they were, even if they were minimally mm -hmm. maintained. If they could yeah. do something. Yeah. yeah. So that would be something else that you know, some of these. If you have any specific ideas of locations, would you mind describing a few of them on the end? Thank you. That would help because we're going to get kicked out very shortly. Yes, I should mention part of the. I, I used to complain about that the roads not being closed because we had people coming from one end of Nyvoort down the other, and we had delivery trucks that were just. I couldn't believe it, that, that old rickety bridge that was half rotted out. We had delivery trucks trying to get over it. They'd get out. They'd peer down. I can't tell you how many people got stuck up there until they put the Jersey barriers down. And I said to them, why don't you do something? They don't close the roads because it means less money for the town. So until the town officially closes the road and updates that information with the state, we will continue to have GPS and traffic on dead end roads. I wonder if there's a way to get them to rate it as hazardous. Yeah, map says if you have the maps rating it as hazardous as opposed to saying it's closed. So maybe yeah. that's a, you no, know, but I like that because if I didn't know that, 
I might have gone down the whole path of investigating these different things. Impassable might be a better word. Impassable, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yes. In fact, what Brad was saying, um, Julius Road is uh, goes out to South Holders Road, and if there's that was an emergency way out until the Springfield Water Department put a gate across the road, the public way that they have blocked off. Yeah. The road is not in great shape; they maintain it to a certain degree, but you can get through there with a the car or a truck. Yeah. But they have a like I say, it's not posted by trespassing. It's a public way. They have a gate across yeah. that road. Don't you dare go across that gate, though. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. I can see our lovely select board of members are arriving. <laughs> and if you guys wouldn't mind, I just to get a few pictures to prove that I was here. <laughs> I promise I will not make you all be published in the newspaper without consent. <laughs> I promise. This is it. Yeah. I like duplicated your reference as well. Oh, okay, great. I did blue stickers for today. The yellow ones with the. Oh, okay. Nice. Had more comments today. Yeah. And we've got so, a sign-in uh, sheet, so we're good. If you guys have any questions, emails, if you want to share any more information, it's right here. Please grab some cheese and drinks. Um, and I'm going to start packing stuff up so the select board can get moving. Um, contact and vote calls. Very good. Here. Very, very good. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Mr. everyone. Guys, thank you. Thank you very much. It's better turnout than I thought it would be for fun.